Welcome to V-Drum Tips. This is an instructional video on how to build a professional noise isolation platform for e-drums. The video is divided into several chapters. The number one problem experienced by most e-drummers is the noise caused by the kick pad, which is transferred through the pedal and the kick pad legs directly into the floor. This low frequency impact noise disturbs flatmates, family members and most of all neighbors. Roland offers two products that are supposed to solve this problem. The Roland NE10 and NE1. These NE10 boards are placed underneath the kick pad and hi-hat pedal. The cylinders are set underneath the legs of the bass drum and hi-hat stand. They do provide an impact noise reduction of 75%, but they come with three drawbacks. The kick and hi-hat wobble slightly. You need three NE10 and five NE1 for common double bass setup. The total price would be more than 400 euro. They only isolate kick drum and hi-hat, even though all other pads transfer vibration through the rack as well. So not the full kit is decoupled from the ground. An alternate is a platform built with all kinds of materials like isolation masks for washing machines or tennis balls. These pads either wobble or they do not isolate properly, since it is not possible to determine the perfect amount of isolation material. There is a much better isolation material called Silomer. Silomer is a special foam made to insulate heavy machinery, buildings or even train tracks from the ground to reduce vibration transfer. These foam blocks are placed underneath those objects and insulate them from the ground. This video shows a ball of fluid placed on a Silomer block on top of a vibration plate. Next to it is no Silomer block. These characteristics make Silomer a perfect insulator for an e-drum platform. Especially since you are able to calculate a specific amount of material according to the weight of your drum kit. First you need to determine the size of your platform. It should rather be too big than too small. This one will be relatively compact with a size of 170 by 130 centimeters. The resulting plate would be too big to be transported in a regular car and too heavy to carry. So I decided to divide it into four separate pieces which are connected by smaller plates and special screws. The platform material should be at least 19 mm strong. However, I went for 24 mm MDF sheets and got them cut in the right sizes by the local wood cutting shop. Any other wood material would work too. The blocks used to connect the four plates are only 19 mm strong. I marked all the spots on where to drill holes on the plates and the connector pieces. It is more than important to measure as accurate as possible to ensure the four platform parts are placed correctly, otherwise there will be gaps afterwards. The speciality of this platform is that it will be separable for transport and storage reasons. This is why I won't use screws for wood, but proper machine screws and weft nuts. I drill the holes for the screws with a drill press. The big plates need a special hole for the weft nut. The nuts have to be even with the platform surface. The yellow sticky tape is a marker for the depth. A Dremel grinding tool is perfect to mire a cylindrical hole. When all holes are drilled, the platform can be assembled. So let's see if I did a good job when measuring. A drum set should always be placed on top of a rock, but laying a piece of carpet on top of the platform is not enough, as the kick drum would slide and the platform would not look that good. Therefore the four platform pieces will be covered with carpet. The carpet was a rest piece from a carpet shop and cost me only 10 euro. It is a thick dark grey carpet with an additional insulation layer. I divided the carpet into four equal pieces and marked the area that will be covered with spray adhesive. Always open the window when using spray adhesive inside, otherwise you might see pink elephants after a while. I gave it one night to dry out and then cut away the sides that will face the other parts of the platform with a sharp knife. It is important to cut away the correct parts, otherwise there won't be material to cover the edges. The edges can be covered with a 6 cm overhang that will be marked and cut away accurately. This step requires more adhesive glue and a staple gun. 
a sharp scissor can make the cutting process easier and faster. The corner is the most difficult part. This leftover square is enough to cover it completely. The extra layer gets removed. Do not spray paint the ground unintentionally. Wrap the carpet around the edges and attach it with the stapler. I cut away the overhang and gave it some time to try out. The pieces fit really well together. A transition is almost not visible. There are 10 different types of Silomere available. I decided to use the type named SR11. The problem with Silomere is that it will only walk if it's loaded with a specific amount of weight. If it carries too less weight, it won't walk. If there's too much weight, it won't walk either. So we need to know the exact amount of weight of everything that is placed on top of the Silomere blocks. This includes the weight of your complete drum kit, including all gear, the weight of the platform itself, and of course, your own body weight. This drum kit's weight is about 100 kg. There is no way to scale it all at once. So I'm using the Spoiler Luggage Scale, which can handle up to 40 kg and scale every single component of the drum kit. This scale is an awesome piece of gear for travel luggage and package weight, by the way. You can find the link in the description. I've also scaled the weight of the blades by simply attaching a screw onto one of them to be able to lift it up. The result can be written into an Excel sheet. I prepared a Google Sheet table for you that can be downloaded on thedrumtips.com. This table automatically calculates the weight of your drum kit and the edge length of the Silomer SR11 pads. The formula, however, needs the number of pads that are used. I go for 10 pads. The pad size can of course be calculated manually, which is not too difficult and does not require to be a math genius. SR11 operates when loaded with a weight of 0.011 Newton per square millimeter until 0.016 Newton per square millimeter. Everything below or above will make it not isolating properly. However, we changed the units to make the calculation easier. 0.011 Newton per square millimeter equals 0.0011 kilogram per square millimeter or 0.11 kilogram per square centimeter. It is easier to imagine little squares of 1 by 1 centimeter that are pressured with 0.11 kilogram. Therefore we calculate everything with kilogram and square centimeter. My platform, all gear and myself have a total weight of 185 kilogram. That means we divide 185 kilogram by 0.11 kilogram. To get the number of square centimeters we need for the total weight, which is 1682 square centimeters in this case. I decided to use 10 pads, which means that each of the pads should have a surface of 168 square centimeters. The square root of this number is 12.96 centimeter, which is the length of each square. The complete formula is simply the square root of total weight divided by 0.11 divided by the number of pads. It is that simple. In case you want to add more gear or become heavier yourself, you should also know the total weight that could be placed on top of the board. We know that 0.11 kg should be the minimum weight that pressures on one square centimeter and 0.16 kg is the maximum weight that can pressure on one square centimeter. Simply divide 0.16 through 0.11 to get the number 1.45. We multiply our total weight of 185 kilogram by this number. The result is 268 kilogram. That means we can add up to 83 kilogram additional weight to our drum kit and the platform would still walk. The result of my calculations are 10 pads with an edge length of 13 centimeters. I ordered 11 instead of 10 pads for the simple reason that I could gain weight or want to expand my drum set. The pads are ordered from all drums. All drums recommended a solution and calculated the pad sizes and the way the pads are distributed for me. The pad distribution is another task that requires either a weight distribution software or some experimenting. Since the Silomer blocks come with an adhesive surface, it would make sense to make them detachable. So I ordered MDF tires that are slightly bigger than the blocks and prepared them for the wood screws by drilling holes into them. Some pads need to be cut into two pieces to mount them at specific spots. 
I chose to place them in a way that most of the foam is underneath the drummer. The half bill pads can be separated together with the blood foam. The silomel units are screwed on with normal wooden screws and an electric drill. The pad can simply be reassembled by unscrewing the connection blades. They can be rotated or completely taken off. The four components are really compact and require only a small space. The assembling process is very simple. All four pads are placed upside down. The first two blades get connected via connection blades. The gaps between the blades should be as small as possible. The rest of the components get attached in a way that the middle is a perfect X and they are not offset. The final part is the middle board. The pad needs to be turned over, which requires some manpower, as its weight is 40 kg. I moved it away from the wall and slowly let it down. Now I can set up the drum kit. The silomere blocks get compressed when entering the board. It does also slightly wobble when playing. But overall, it's a solid and good looking solution for a price of 272 euro, which could be even less expensive by researching cheaper manufacturers for the materials. The only way for me to display the effect of this board is a seismometer app. The app shows a difference, but cannot be seen as a 100% accurate measuring tool. The best way to measure the result is a quiet neighbor that doesn't complain anymore. Please find all relevant information in the video description and let me know if you liked this video. There will be a written article on vtrumptips.com soon. That's it for this episode and thanks for watching.